This is a proof of concept that I built to test an arm-like basketball throwing mechanism. It all started when Pepe, the gallery owner at the local gallery in Toronto, asked me if I wanted to be part of a basketball inspired art exhibit. So I set out to create something that would top last year's project, which was the basketball flavored corporate ping pong machine. I wasn't exactly sure what I was setting out to create at this point. I knew I wanted to use this arm like concept to shoot balls into a basket of some sort. I wasn't exactly sure. So I had this proof of concept and it was actually working surprisingly well, but it was a little bit janky. So the first step was to try to beef up the design to make it a little bit more accurate. I made some of the parts thicker, doubled up the bearings in some locations, doubled up the vertical arms to make it a little bit stronger. And I added the whole thing onto an MDF base to keep it stable while it was firing. Next, I added a net complete with a glass backboard and a custom mesh, and it was time to start taking some shots. And as you can see, it was not working that well. The ball wasn't quite arcing the way it was supposed to, and I was suspecting that it had something to do with the design of the scoop. So that was next up. Now, I didn't take an especially mathematical approach to this. I was basically just tweaking dimensions until I found something that would give me the arc that I was looking for. And what I found was the shorter scoop would allow the ball to be released earlier in the shot, causing a bigger arc. So that's what I went with. And I was finding that it was starting to hit shots a lot more consistently, but how consistently? And to answer that question, I went on a little bit of a side quest, which ultimately would have nothing to do with the final design. We'll talk more about that in a second. But the side quest was to produce a mechanical hopper that would feed the scoop automatically, allowing the robot to rapid fire basketball shots consecutively. What resulted was this, which was super fun. And with the confidence that I could now hit basketball shots in my sleep, it was time to start figuring out what the final concept was going to look like. I decided to go with the two arm design where each arm is just shooting into the other arm's basket and the ball is recycled right back into the scoop. With that decision made, it was time to go into design mode and figure out how I wanted this whole thing to look. Sometimes this is the trickiest part of the whole process, because you have to create something from nothing and there's no rules to tell you exactly which direction to go in. But after trying a few different shapes and sizes in CAD, I decided to go with this design. And this brings me to the most arduous part of the entire design process, integration. First up was improving on the mechanics of the arm design. Although I already had a working design, it used springs to help the motor shoot the ball. The problem with the springs is anytime you would turn off the machine, the arm would pop up into this high position. With the springs removed, whenever you would turn off the motors, the arm would just drop into this low position so it's ready to go anytime you turn it back on. So it was simple, just remove the springs and try to take a shot. And when I did that, I got absolutely nothing. Turns out that the motors don't have enough torque to shoot the ball without any sort of help. I could have tried a different type of motor like a servo motor or maybe a DC motor, but stepper motors have the added benefit of being able to be driven silently. And since this is going to live in a gallery, I had to work with this. I spent the week exploring many different design options, like this gear driven design, which added more torque, but it was way too slow. Or this two motor design, which actually worked, but it was really hard to keep the motors in sync. And while all of this engineering was going on, the industrial design department decided to chime in and say that the whole mechanism needed to be embedded in the base. So the engineering department, while trying to figure out just how to get the thing to shoot in the first place, started trying to integrate all of these changes in at the same time. And after like six or seven iterations, I ended up with nothing that was working and I was starting to feel a little bit defeated. But then it hit me, engineering playbook 101, if at first you don't succeed, try bigger motors. And with that piece of the puzzle sorted out, I realized that I could just drop the motor down to the lower arm, shorten everything so the motors need a little bit less torque to shoot the ball. And I ended up with this design that could comfortably fit in the base and was really showing some promise. Buddy. We have an arm that works. We have an aesthetic that we're going for. So it was time to start producing the actual parts. And this is kind of scary because these parts are massive. You basically just got a full send and hope that you didn't miss anything big. And after about a day, this is what an entire roll of filament looks like on the print bed. And this is an entire other roll of filament. So I decided to assemble one arm and one basketball net. And before putting the whole thing together, I just couldn't help myself, had to do some trick shots. All right, enough funny business. Let's put this thing together. The plan was to give the base strength by jamming these quarter inch rods into the holes in the base. Easy, right? Except for when I went to jam the parts onto the rods, they didn't fit. The holes were too small. I wasn't about to go through another two full rolls of filament. Quick trip to the hardware store and a massive drill bit and the problem was solved. 
We can keep moving forward. After screwing the pieces together, I now had the single biggest thing that I had ever 3D printed. To make this thing look a little bit less like a prototype, I coated the whole thing in this XTC 3D, sanded it, and gave it a couple coats of paint. It turned out amazing. I was so satisfied. All right, next up is the court floor. I used my laser cutter to score the floor pattern onto some maple plywood, and then I cut the pieces out. For the lines, I laser cut some white acrylic, and then I also laser cut a couple panels for the front of the sculpture. I attached everything to the base using two-part epoxy. Now, not only did I have the biggest thing that I had ever 3D printed, but maybe the nicest thing that I'd ever made from an aesthetic standpoint. So, if all else fails, at least there's that. I topped the stainless steel rods in that hold up the basketball net. Kind of scary at this point, but it worked. We're good. I attached the backboards and the rims. And that leaves us with the final component. And that is the ball catcher, which catches the ball after a shot and delivers it to the scoop of the other arm. So this is my original design. And although it works, I'm not happy with the way that it looks. It kind of looks a little bit like a colon. Instead, after many, many different iterations, I finally settled on this design, which uses a clear flexible catcher and a rigid track to direct the ball back into the scoop. The rigid track was easy to print on my FDM machines, but for the flexible catcher, I needed this. The Form 3 Plus from Form Labs. Huge shout out to Form Labs for sending me this machine. It is incredible. And using their flexible ADA resin, I printed out the parts. After a quick wash and cure, I removed the supports, assembled the catcher, and on the very first test, it did not work. I didn't design enough of a tilt angle into the catcher so the ball would just get stuck when it landed there. I was pretty devastated because it was 3 a.m. and the gallery was opening the next day and it wasn't working still. I thought I was screwed, but after some tests, I realized it was actually pretty easy to fix. Instead of reprinting everything, I just added an adapter that would tilt the catcher back a little bit and this actually solved the problem. Not bad for some 3 a.m. engineering. Finally, I just had to drill some scary holes for some last minute ball sensors, finalize the electronics, and then it was off on its final sketchy adventure to the local gallery. Presenting to you what I am officially calling Super Splash Bros. I am so happy with the way that this thing turned out. It's really pushed me to think a lot more about aesthetics and design and material choice on top of the engineering. And although it's not perfect, nothing is, it definitely achieves that mesmerizing effect that I was going for. But my favorite part, if you listen really closely, when you take a little tiny basketball and you make a perfect shot, you get a little tiny swish. Such an honor to have my work shown amongst the work of so many talented artists. This has been a crazy fun project to work on. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Not even close, like nowhere close.